Michelle, thank you. Uh, once again, I apologize to everybody I have to cut off. We have a lot of fascinating talks. Uh, I hate being rude to somebody, uh, but uh, we have to get through these. Thank you. Go ahead, Michelle. Okay, so I'm Michelle Lott with Lean RAQA. Um, so I'm gonna cut right to the chase here. I know most of the open source um, people who are designing and developing products right now are from other industries. And so the first thing that you need to know about designing FDA regulated products is that it is absolutely mission critical um, to understand design control and risk management. Um, first off, is everybody seeing my slides okay? Yes, we are. Okay, perfect. So um, the uh, FDA has a whole formal process for how to design and document uh, design controls. And the most important thing is that uh, risk management is integrated the entire way. Um, and this even means to a point during the emergency use authorization. If you look at the table of contents for the emergency use authorization, several of the, the elements, which I've highlighted here in red, are direct outputs of the design and development and risk management process. So you really can't cut these corners. Um, and in the ventilator EUA, there are over 20 technical standards from a variety of families that are cross cutting and touch almost every aspect of your product design. Um, we're gonna do a quick case study on electrical safety design requirements. If you, no matter what kind of medical device you're designing, if it has electrical properties to it, you have at minimum a, a, these sets of standards for basic electrical safety, electromagnetic capability, usability, and alarm settings. And so if we quickly look at a specific example in these technical examples, just for, just for the medical device power supply, you have to get into what type of environment it's used in. That type of environment detect, um, depicts if you have to have, or dictates if you have to have air clearances and voltage creep. Then it gets down into very specific deliverables of your device design with power cords, uh, what type of personnel are gonna be installing your device. And that's just one specific example. So what happens if marketing comes back and tells you, oh, our bad, we need to be able to also use this for um, home healthcare, not just uh, industrial healthcare, and it needs to have a multi-function patient monitor. Well, in that case, we have to take our design, go back to the drawing board with the technical standards. Just adding those two features at minimum adds a safety standard for home healthcare environments. It adds a separate safety standard for multi-patient monitoring, and it adds an FDA guidance document requirements for home use. So if we go back to the drawing board with our design and we look at just the aspect of home healthcare, it completely changes what our voltage clearances have to be. Not only now do we have to think about operator protection from the healthcare space, but now we have to think about patient protect protection from the uh, home healthcare. Uh, those have very different um, voltage requirements, output and acceptance criteria. So if you are not very familiar with the technical standards, you're gonna design a product that at the end of the day, is it gonna meet the technical standard requirement and it's not gonna be able to be cleared by the FDA under the emergency use or otherwise. So if we shift gears and look at what's needed on the market right now. So Dyson thought they were coming to the rescue of the, e the UK early on and in 10 days and with $25 million, they developed this fairly sophisticated ven ventilator. And these are people who know how to design products with electrical safety requirements. However, when they submitted this to the MHRA, the MHRA declared that they did not need any more ventilators because they felt like a patient on invasive, ventilator, invasive ventilation was just as likely, if not more likely to die um, as opposed to non-invasive respiratory technologies. So what does that mean for the open source community and what your successful products will be? Um, and this is my personal opinion, but I feel like the successful products are gonna be non-invasive. They're gonna be respiratory assist in nature. They're gonna be low infrastructure in terms of power source requirements, gas supply, medical know-how, 
Um, they're going to take into account the doctors per capita in the countries you intend to uh, sell, distri distribute them in. And they're going to be low in supply chain requirements, both to manufacture the device and both in the healthcare um, environment. Um, they are going to be compliant with basic design controls and risk management and compliant with applicable standards. So don't forget about the free stuff. BSI has um, standards available for free that are worth thousands of dollars. And don't forget about me. And that's my time. Okay, thank you very much, Michelle. Um, there aren't any questions. Uh, you know, I have to say uh, that um, uh, talk tends to make our um, job a little harder, but I don't think we should get discouraged. All of those problems are problems which can be addressed. Uh, they just require time and study and work to solve all of those problems. So um, it is daunting to meet all of those safety requirements, but that doesn't mean that we can't accomplish that.